Hello everyone, and welcome back to Embroidery Tutorials. Today we are working our way through some rather interesting new stitches on circle six of my 90 variation chain stitch tutorial. And if you've ever heard of these or done these before, then I give you a virtual high five because they are not super well known. I only learned of them while doing some deep research into the creation of this tutorial, but I found them so fun and unique that I just had to include them in this sampler. First up, we're filling in the third half circle on the side of our square with Van Dyke stitch. No idea where this name came from. The history of embroidery stitches is not easy to find, but maybe the inventor was named Van Dyke. That's the simplest explanation, I suppose. Anyway, we will start by creating a little X up here at the start of our circle. This is the anchor for the rest of the stitches, so you can make it any basic size and proportion. I like to make the lower legs longer so that it blends in with the rest of the stitches. Now we are coming up on the outer circle and sliding our needle under the two legs of the X before going down on the inner circle. So you can see we are just creating a little loop of thread around the X with these nice long legs. Come back up on the outer circle and this time you are going under the two legs of the X that your loop created. Then it's back down on the inner circle and continue on with that pattern. So Van Dyke stitch is extremely variable or alterable, I suppose. The basis of the stitch is a loop of thread circled around the central X of the previous loop. But beyond that, you can really play around with the various elements, making the legs longer or shorter, alternating lengths, changing the stitch sizes, changing the angle of the legs, changing the direction of your wrap, you get the picture. I'm going to switch up my pattern after stitching a third of the circle. So now I'll make a small loop with much shorter legs inside the two lines, and I'll alternate that with the long-legged one for a totally new look. And on the last third, I'll show you how easy it is to switch direction. I have finished up a stitch here, and now instead of coming back up on the outer ring, I'll just come up on the inner one instead. This means I can now wrap the thread under the previous loop in the opposite direction away from me instead of towards me, which is much easier to manage from this angle. I'll also stitch this side even tighter and closer together. You want to make sure if you are going really close together that you're not going through one of your threads on accident, because then of course, your loops and your legs won't lay evenly. So play around with Van Dyke on this section. If you want to just practice the basic one the whole way, that's totally okay. But if you'd like to try out a few things, there's space and loads of options. On our final side of the square, we are going to be stitching knotted purl stitch. I've also seen this one called purl knot stitch in case you're ever looking it up. I'm stitching this one with cotton purl thread because I enjoy the chunky nature of the knotted line that you get in the center. Starting at the top of our half circle, create a little vertical stitch as the anchor for the line. Come up right below it on the inner ring, then lay your thread out to create a nice loop on the left side of the stitch. Slide your needle under the stitch from right to left, going through the loop you created, then pull downward to tighten it. Repeat that, laying out the loop again, then sliding your needle under that straight stitch and going through the loop for a second knot. Now take your needle back through the fabric on the outer ring. You can spread these stitches out or pack them together as you please. I'm doing a fairly tightly packed version here, but I don't want to go too close together because I want to see all of my little legs separately. Once again, we lay out a loop, slide the needle under that straight stitch, 
this upper leg we've created and pull tight. Then repeat to double the knot before anchoring that knot with another upward leg. If you're into stitching bugs, both of these stitches could make really fun looking centipedes with all their little legs. Throw these into your botanical pieces along with those detached butterfly chains. Just three more stitches to go on this circle, filling in this outer ring, and yep, they are all pretty complex patterns, but they are also a ton of fun to learn, so I will see you right back here for those tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, everyone!